Hello everyone, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Total War Attila in our Eternal Empire series. So we are kind of keeping our eye on the Huns out here. I do want to set some of these armies to fortify so that they don't suffer any more attrition damage than they already have. Thankfully, the Huns have withdrawn from our territory here, so the armies that weren't healing in the previous episode are now, in fact, healing. Um, they are not healing in this province, though, because the Huns are in this province now, so they're preventing this army that suffered some winter attrition from regenerating, which is very annoying. Um, but what I'm going to do to fix that problem is I'm actually going to move them down to... Uh, what's, what would be the most efficient way to do this? Why don't I move you to Domavia? Because I want to keep these armies close. But I want to make sure these armies stay at full strength. It's funny because moving them through the... <laughs> through the snow there actually did a little bit of damage. But, um... Alright, I do need to rebuild that province as well. I've got a lot of rebuilding in general to do. But I'm very focused at the moment, in case you missed the last episode, I'm very focused on defeating the Huns. Just making sure that they are no longer a threat to me whatsoever before I make too many aggressive military moves. But once the Huns are dead, I'm telling you, things are, are going to go down. We also are really hoping that the Picts uh, recolonize Rome because we want to be able to march on that city before we conquer it. So we're going to try and give them as much room as we can to do that because Rome has, of course, been burned to the ground. We can rebuild it, but it's not as fun to rebuild it. Nothing. You don't see a cinematic. You don't get to see troops marching on the city or anything. We would just rebuild it and it would be ours which is not as fun. <laughs> so we're going to try to give them some time to do it, hopefully, hoping that the AI will uh, will actually do it. So let's end the turn. You may still assign a provincial governor because one of our most awesome governors died. I'm so pissed. All right, let's... All right, looks like Spahan now is... This is another former capital province of the old territory. So we're going to have of the old uh, Sassanid Empire's territory. We are going to put a new governor here in Spahan. Marcus Turtis. He's a current master of soldiers. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Well, what are your traits? He's irresolute. He's melancholic. He's a eunuch. Um, all right, tell you what. You're now the governor of Spahan, buddy. Congratulations. Merry Christmas. All right, so... You are going to create some additional Roman influence. And now let's end the turn. See what happens. If anything. <laughs> As I believe I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I know I mentioned in the beginning of this video that I'm trying to uh, focus on the hunts, but as I mentioned at the end of the last video, I really am trying to let them come to me a little bit because now that Attila is dead... I just, I feel like I want to make them show me their hand, so to speak. And see what kind of military moves they might try to make if I appear to be going more on the defensive. So their agents are definitely messing with me. They have one here currently messing with Sirmium, and they have one here that's probably going to mess with me and Sopiane. Let's see if they do anything. Nope. They, ooh, they have another one coming down to Sopiane. That's hilarious. So they're going to mess with Sopiane twice. So what they're probably doing is messing with the army, I would guess, to try and weaken the army's health. All right. So these guys are no longer raiding, which is good. That might mean they're about to make a move. And again, I want them to make a move. Making Them making a move is a good thing. See, this is what ticks me off about the AI. They have every possible... They have every right to just take Regium and... Um, what, what, what city is that again? What city? I can't remember what his name is. Tarentum. They have every, every way to take those. Oh, good. He got a good wife. Oh, he got a really good wife. He got an ambitious wife. It's going to lower his loyalty, but he's, he's going to be really ambitious. All right. Take her hand. That's fine. You're going to be, you're going to be the new heir. Now all you have to do, my good man, you're 37. Your wife's 37. You're not much younger than us. You need to have a kid. If you can beat us to having a kid, the race is on then you get the crown of air, but uh, not a second before. <laughs> we adopted this guy into our family. He's not an actual member of our family, but our, our only son is a bastard child, uh, which we, we had him before our wife was married to us. So, yeah. all right, is there anyone else with loyalty issues right now? Nope, everyone's pretty loyal, which is good. 
All right, we have a lot of money. Just ridiculous amounts. Our income is continuing to climb, which is what you want to see in these situations. Let's go ahead and upgrade the towns fully in this area. Yep, we can go ahead and upgrade that as well. On Kyra, definitely need a new governor's house. Reservoir. Auxilia barracks. Oh wow, spent all my money already. Well, tell you what, let's not get that ambitious. Let's let's still focus on food. And a trade wharf as well. Wait, before I do a trade wharf, let me go ahead and do this olive press. And even before I do that fishing jetty, let me upgrade this aqueduct so we have better sanitation because it looks like there's a sanitation issue in Tarsus. It's not a huge sanitation issue. There's only a 2% outbreak chance, but I'd, I'd like to keep my sanitation managed as much as possible. All right, so our income has gone down, weirdly enough. Septimus Pacentius Nata. Excellent. So he's a 38... Oh, wow. A 38-year-old general that just got Vera Lustrous? You, sir... You, sir, have, have done well for yourself. Good God. That is insanely good for a general that young to have Vera Lustrous. He's going to be an epic, epic Roman to have on the front lines. Now, Thessalonica. What do I, I know I can build onagers here, so I'm going to need to do that. Because I want to recruit onagers for this army. Now that Attila's dead, I can focus more on having city-conquering armies that can march out and just wreak havoc on Western Europe and retake the former territory of the Western Empire. How's public order here? Looking good. Let's go ahead and break down that area in, in uh, Caucasia. And we'll end the turn. We're in a really good position now. Um, I'm still, even though it's been like a month, <laughs> I'm still kind of bitter about Attila dying rather than us getting to kill him. Um, it's part of the reason I really want to try and give uh, the picks here a chance to rebuild Rome to see if they'll do that. Take Tarentum. You're so close. You can take it. Just take it. There's nothing stopping you. Rebuild Rome while you're at it. Um, because, you know, a lot of times, you know, kind of the, uh, the highlights, I guess, the... Uh, the grand moments of a campaign like this can get taken from you beyond your control. You know, Attila can die just by some other hand that wasn't yours, by some other AI character, or um, Rome can get burned to the ground, for instance. So we're going to try and let history reverse itself a little bit there, hopefully. Hispania is actually the second strongest faction on the map right now, which is blowing my mind. The Subians were pretty powerful for a while, but they actually seem to have, have fallen on on, uh, on bad times. All right, so we're going to do a Silk Road rest house there. We're definitely going to upgrade this sacred shrine because we want additional Roman influence in the area. And we're going to double down on that by building an auditorium, which should, yep, increase the influence of Roman paganism. Now, I remember somewhere I was building a mosaic cutter. I was breaking down a mosaic cutter somewhere in order to facilitate resource production at, a, at another city. Now I can't remember where it was. Where was it? Hang on. Uh, was it here? No, it wasn't there wasn't there oh wait you know what it was I think no it wasn't down here either where the heck was it I don't recall I mean I'll find it eventually that's not an issue all right we're definitely gonna do an, uh, some orchards in Salona huh oh Sermium can also build that's good so Yep, we definitely want to have additional Roman influence in that region. I mean, that's actually close to home, so absolutely we want Roman influence there. Let's go ahead and build the Sacred Shrine here as well, just really trying to drive that home. We also need battle engineering right now. We need it yesterday. Let's go ahead and upgrade these cities to be uh, fortified towns, so that if anyone tries to attack Corinthus or Derhachium, which are both coastal cities on our border, uh, they can defend themselves. And let's do the same with these core cities. And that's most of our money, actually. Ready for 
All right, so I think recruiting is done here. I need to move these guys down to Thessalonica, and in four turns, we're going to build large onagers for this army. I don't have the money to upgrade this army right now, but I will. All right, let's end the turn again. Again, trying to let the Huns come to us, because right now they're just hiding in their little hidey hole, doing their thing. What I should really do is just march those armies down that I have uh, near them and just corner those armies and kill them. I, I feel like that would be the, the wisest course of action. Please conquer that territory and try and take Rome. In a way, part of me just wants to have the Picts take control of Italy so that I can say that I actually took the Italian peninsula from my alternate Crusader Kings 2 ego that's currently playing the uh, Lord of the Scots series. <laughs> I mean, it would just... I don't know. It, it would be funny. All right, looks like looks like a province up there just got burned to the ground. Don't know which one, but gonna have some desolation in that area. Yeah, these armies are just hanging out here now. I feel like I just need to jump them with these armies. I don't know how good of a job I could do with that. I feel like I might have missed my chance a little bit just now because the weather's good, but it's probably about to turn snowy. Maybe I will cycle through to the next summer or autumn to where we have that again. We'll see. The Franks have been destroyed, interestingly enough. Okay. Some more Hunnic agent activity, military, okay. A lot of our, a lot of our uh, politicians have just left office. So let's go ahead and fix that issue. All right, you can be a military count now. Our bastard son is a military count, which is hilarious. Our bastard son has had a bastard son, because they're bastards. Uh, Master of Office, Septimus... Uh, da -da -da -da, Septimus not, I can't do anything. Septimus Taurus, no, wait, 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 wait. Marcus Tertus can. He's going to be Master of Foot, very good. Wow. Almost nobody has enough Nobody has enough influence, basically, because no one's fighting right now, so no one's gaining ground influence-wise. Okay, so actually, things are not quite as dire as I thought they were. We might be able to move some armies close to the Huns and kind of corner them. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Let me see. This is the furthest army back. Oh, yeah, we can totally do this. All right, so here's how this is going to happen. We're going to move this army here and hopefully they won't suffer any attrition damage uh, nope they didn't very good Ready for battle. all right this army is fortified so we're gonna have them come we're gonna unfortify them and have them come here i don't know why i described that their fortification has nothing to do with what's happening right now now the one thing that could happen here is the huns could still hop across the river here completely possible it's annoying as crap but it's possible um so what i'm going to do is move this army back over to sirmium right there just to help defend against whatever shenanigans they might try and throw my way so they are within re um reinforcement range as you can see now this in looks like three turns i'm going to be able to build up battle engineering battle. with this army so we'll do that this army is here in Apulum uh, see this these rivers are blocking my passage into this area where the Hunnic armies are actually standing so if they manage to hop the rivers as they sometimes do um, they could, they could do some damage to me right now. So I'm not looking forward to that possibility. However, it looks like I can go ahead and turn taxes back on here because um, the situation, the public order situation here is much better. So we're going to go ahead and start recolonizing a little bit further north. Awesome. Colonize. So Anacopia now belongs to Rome. Also, are we trading with these guys? Hang on, let's have a look. Who are we? We're, we're only trading with the Getulians right now, which is interesting. The Getulians are being attacked quite mercilessly by the Picts. 
I really, really want you to retake Rome. Please do that, Pix. Um, now we could declare war on these guys. Public order here. Actually, public order is just taking a nosedive. It's not as quite as it. It's not quite as good as it was a moment ago. Uh, but it will get better. So we'll we'll give it another turn before we leave that province entirely with our armies because they are needed for public order. But things are heading in a good direction. All right. Where was that province? Okay, now that I'm thinking about it again, where was that province that I was? I need a food market there. I know I was breaking down one of the wealth buildings, the Middle Eastern wealth buildings. Oh, yes, that's right. It was Arbella because we need to have marble. All right, so marble and Arbella. That's that's why I was doing that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and build a Imperial Cult Basilica in Tessaphon because it's just a symbol of Roman conquest. That's the biggest religion building you can have. Um, so having a basilica in Tessaphon is, I mean, I just think it's appropriate considering the fact that that was once a capital of the mighty Sassanid Empire, which we have vanquished in this series at great, <laughs> at great pain, vanquished them. Uh, also, speaking of Imperial cult basilicas, we're going to build one here as well because it's one of the farthest, um, east territories that we can do so. So that's another kind of symbolic gesture there. Uh, we'll do some additional... Cattle herds, upgraded cattle herds, rather, there. All right, and now is... This is the moment of truth. Gratianus Nero, governor. Uh, we can reduce corruption with him. We can improve food production with him. Very good. All right, let's end the turn. I can probably turn on taxes in several other provinces very soon because everything's growing quite quickly, which is exactly what I wanted. It's just, it's very, very good. Okay. So they have withdrawn from Tarentum again. <laughs> they had every opportunity to take that city, and yet they just backed off of it. One of the things I cannot wait to do, and this could seriously affect how much I continue to play Total War Attila campaigns on the channel um, in the future, because, you know, Civilization Six is coming out, so I'm going to pivot strongly towards that. But uh, I definitely want to mess with some of the campaign AI mods um, and see if those actually do a good job of altering the campaign AI to make it, well more bold to make it reconquer territory that's been uh, demolished or that's been um, turned desolate that's been salted if you will but also um, okay let's see what the Huns do here see if they try and hop out if they don't then we can do a ton of damage to them right now this is not the last of their force but I just hope that they're truly trapped here that they're as trapped as we would be trying to come in from the other direction oh no Okay, so some additional forces have come in this direction, but they're they're just raiding. So that's good, actually. If we can finish off their other army, then we should be good to go. But yeah, I, I want to see how the campaign AI, campaign AI... Why am I having trouble saying that? The campaign AI um, mods work. So if you have any suggestions, feel free. Hostile agent activity betray. Uh... Oh yeah, we want to pay this guy off because we don't want to be out of favor. Political favors. Okay, good. So that was not successful. Alright, so they have taken Regium. That's good news. So they've made some progress. They, they're being somewhat aggressive. I just want them to be more aggressive. I want them to freaking take Rome, please. It, would just, it makes so much sense for them to do that. All right, now let's not forget about Arbella. We're going to break this down so that we can build a uh, column carver in Arbella, which will also help with Roman religious influence. We'll go ahead and build a circus there as well for similar reasons, Roman religious influence. Let's see if anyone else has gained the influence necessary to assume a political office. Doesn't seem so, which isn't surprising. 
Okay, big surprise. Our son uh, is having loyalty issues because of his wife. So we're going to fix that. But once he's the heir, things should be better. I just want to give them a chance to conceive a child. I'm also giving the emperor a chance to do so as well. All right, so that's that's everyone there. All right, well, these armies did not run. So I think I'm going to crush them. <laughs> All right, let's see. Where's the zone of control? I want to have you come there. Ready for battle. Have you come there. Commander. Now, which army would be best to actually lead the assault? At once. Looks like this one. Of course they got away. Alright, so we are making them scatter across the river, which is lame as hell. But that gives me the opportunity to attack them one-on-one. -on -one. Like so. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, awesome. All right, so there's that. This army can do something very similar. Don't worry, we're going to fight one of the last battles against the Huns, but these overwhelming victories, these these one-on-one -on -one fights, um, I'm not as worried about it. I'm just not. Okay. So we've got them fortified again. This general... So now that we've done some some uh, some fighting, things might be a little better. And now this last army here is incredibly weak. And they ran too. Big surprise. Alright, so now let's see if I move... Alright, I can rapid march these guys back to Sopiane, which we're going to do. They're going to take some attrition damage getting there. But I also want to rapid march... Well, no. I'll leave you guys there. Fortify up. So that you regain some, some life. Actually, they may not regain some life because we have these raiders up here. In that territory. That's super, super annoying. Alright, this army in Apulum. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Thessalonica, how are things here? Two turns. Okay, two turns and we can build the artillery for this army. Huh. Alright, so that's really reduced the Hunnic threat. There's still one Hunnic stack close by. Ah, oh, screw it. I'm gonna go ahead and hit him. Bye-bye. That's satisfying. And awesome. I have to have a 54-year-old general. He's a little older. We just had someone die at 56, so 54 is definitely, like death age in Total War Attila. Um, but he could definitely be alive for a while yet. We'll see. Alright, good. This character needs to be a Master of Soldiers. So some of these generals that were just involved in battles should be able to assume positions now. Hmm. All right, we've got some money. Before I cut the episode, let's go ahead and zip around and see where I can spend it. I want some military jetties in Alexandria, because again, we want to focus on uh, future naval dominance, the ability to build up naval forces really quickly. So I'm going to upgrade these to maximum level cities. Upgrade the trade wharf again. Upgrade the fishing jetties here. Actually, we're going to do a lot here. And did we already... Yes, that's right. Arbella is going to be done in the next turn. Awesome. All right. Well, on that note, before I actually end... Well, no. Let's end the turn. Anatolius Fronto. Uh, all right. We're just going to give that... He's one of our... Uh, champions that's helping to increase recruitment capacity down in Alexandria. All right, let's end the turn. Let's let things cycle and see how things finish up here before we cut the episode. God, I'm so hoping that the picks take Rome. That would just make things so much more fun. I mean, it, it, it's going to be cool to control Rome regardless, and if Rome gets attacked, we can still fight while defending Rome. 
but I really want the picks to reform Rome. It just makes so much sense for them to do that. At least it does to me. <laughs> oh, man. Subians, are you still losing your strength or are you regaining it? Huns, are you still getting your butts kicked? Or are you going to try and go out with a bang? If I weaken the Huns enough, they could try and kamikaze against me. So, this, yeah, this is just their agent trying to mess with me. So they have those three death stacks up near Severia. That's kind of worrisome because Severia has been rebuilding this whole time. And if they attack Severia, they'll probably burn it to the ground. And if they burn Severia to the ground, well, then I'll have to rebuild it again. <laughs> so... Uh, right, Septimania has been destroyed. Tonic agents messing with me as usual. Oh crap, we were not able to secure our adopted son's loyalty. So are you going to be a little jerk now because you married someone that's ambitious? Is that, is that how this is going to go down? Fine, let's try and get our wife to secure his loyalty. Use your feminine wiles. Okay, our it looks like. Oh no. Okay, I thought, I thought maybe. Our bastard grandson had died, but it looks like he's still alive. I'm not sure why the portrait's grayed out there, but it is. All right. So now let's go back through, really quick before I end this, and see if there's anyone that I could promote. No, there's not. Okay. Well, on that note, I will go ahead and cut this episode here. And in the next one, we're going to see what's going on with these. Ooh, they left. <laughs> we're going to see what's going on with those people somewhere up there. It's actually good that they left it. It'll give me the chance to put an army in Severia and kind of defend because we know they're up in that direction. The Huns, the Hunnic leader is in fact... Crap. Where is he? Oh, right there. Right, duh. Right in front of my face. So the Hunnic leader is right there, and Severia is, of course, right here. So the Huns, I have a feeling, are just here now. So if we can march up and get some armies in that territory and really push against them, if we can eliminate the Huns again, they're not even the, they're the eighth strongest faction on the map, but they just have the ability to wreak a lot of havoc because they like to burn things when they conquer them. The Subians have regained some strength. Interesting. They're strength rank three again. The Picts are, of course, number two, but we've got a lot to do. And I hope you'll stick around to watch. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I upload new episodes in Eternal Empire every day at noon, Eastern Daylight Time, which is GNT minus four, for those of you not in the States. And if Eternal Empire is over when you're watching this, it'll be something else in kind of a historical strategy or grand strategy type of vibe. And comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in a bit.